tell us, uh, you know, give us the, the five minute introduction of who you are. All right. Well, my name is Joey Greenstone. I've been living in Peru for the last uh, 11 years now, and I've been in the, <clears throat> the plant spirit medicine path for all that time. And that is what first brought me to Peru in the first place was um, <clears throat> seeking out apprenticeship and, and healing and learning from plant medicines, specifically ayahuasca. I began my path with ayahuasca all those years ago. Uh, I received a very, very powerful calling uh, prior to that while I was still living in the United States. And uh, I knew and I felt very strongly that I, I was being called to become a, a medicine person uh, or a shaman or, or whichever term you want to use for it. Um, so I, I decided that I needed to come to Peru immediately uh, to head into the Amazon to begin to work with that medicine. And I did that, and not too long after, <clears throat> after arriving here, um, I knew that, that my life path was going to be here, and so I decided to stay. Um, at the time when I decided to stay, it hadn't been my intention originally to, uh, to stay here all this time. Uh, I had planned to stay for several months, uh, continue my learning, and then return to the States, work, um, and, then, and then come back. But uh, the guidance that I was receiving from my spirit guides and the, uh, the spirit of the, of the medicine of ayahuasca, the message was very clear that I needed to stay. So mm, I thought it over for, for a couple of weeks and I ended up skipping my flight and I've been here ever since. Nice. So uh, now you deal with Huachuma right now almost exclusively. Why Wachuma? Well, my path shifted after four or so years in uh, of the ayahuasca apprenticeship. <clears throat> the story is probably a little bit too long to, to get into here, but um, I was just beginning to receive the calling from the mountains, the spirit of the mountains, and specifically of the Wachuma cactus. Um, so things, my path, shifted from living in the jungle and working with the Amazonian plants um, to come into the Andes Mountains and beginning to work with the Wachuma medicine. Um, as I began to work with it, uh, it began to teach me and show me that <clears throat> the way my path was going to continue, the way my path in medicine was going to continue would be to uh, be learning from uh, and eventually sharing the Wachuma medicine with other people. Okay. Now, what would you say would be the, the, the main differences between ayahuasca and Wachuma? Well, or are there? There are differences, um, and there's a lot of uh, similarities. <clears throat> the main, first I'll talk about a similarity. The main, the main similarity and the thing that people should know, and I believe people really need to know, is that ultimately these medicines accomplish the same things and the exact same things um, with respect to uh, three major things that I like to discuss um, when I talk about <clears throat> my program uh, for medicine and healing is uh, directly healing on all the levels of the being, of the human being, starting with the subtle energetic and up to the physical. So we're talking about spiritual, emotional, mental, and on up to the physical. The next is consciousness development. <clears throat> Developing our consciousness, which is the awareness of being aware. And lastly, uh, evolution of the spirit. So these are three major things that the, both of these medicines accomplish. Um, today, you know, in the world today, in 2020, ayahuasca is pretty well known. Uh, thank you very much to the, to the internet. Uh, <laughs> simply put. <Fair> play. <laughs> But uh, Wachuma doesn't get as much exposure. Um, I have uh, several beliefs about that as to why, but <clears throat> the, the bottom line is that not as many people know about it. And of the people who do know about it, they probably, for whatever reason, and it might be subconscious, don't classify it in the same category as ayahuasca with respect to it being able to accomplish uh, <clears throat> the three things that I just described. 
and not only accomplish it, but accomplish it at, at an equal level to uh, how ayahuasca does it. Some of the differences is uh, in how the uh, the ceremony um, or the um, the ritual of uh, taking the medicine is done. Ayahuasca is done at night, um, and it's typically done indoors. In a traditional setting, it's done in the jungle in the ceremony of Maloka, which is the large uh, a hut um, where it's carried out. It's carried out at night. Um, it usually lasts five, six hours on average. Whereas Wachuma um, typically is consumed in the day. So beginning in the morning, the effects of the medicine are, are longer, two to three times as long as ayahuasca, uh, although they can tend to be coming and going in waves and not fully intense for 15 hours, kind of up and down and then kind of coming down uh, to the end of the journey. And uh, conducting the, uh, the Wachuna ceremonies outside. So here in the Andes, it's done outside in nature, um, here in the mountains. So those are, those are some of the big differences. Um, with respect to effect and how people uh, react to and experience the medicine, it can be very similar. So we're going to be talking about closed-eyed visions or visuals, um, as well as <clears throat> a change in, uh, in perception of the environment around you with your eyes open. So that could be seeing auras, um, energies, and spirits. And for most people with Wachuma, it's a combination of the two. Um, the nature of the ayahuasca ceremony, because it's done inside at night, is most people have a closed-eyed journey. Whereas with Wachuma, and especially with the way that I conduct uh, the ceremony and the medicine process, um, or the medicine experience, people are going to have a combination of an inward journey, which means with your eyes closed, as well as with eyes open. Okay. Now, what do you do in your ceremonies that, uh, that maybe other people don't do? Uh, why do you do it that way? What, what do you, I mean, obviously, you wouldn't do it if you didn't think that was the better way to do it. But, uh, but what are some of the differences in the way you conduct ceremony to the way you see other people conduct ceremony? Well, first I want to say that the way that I conduct things is just how I've been guided <clears throat> from my spirit guide since the beginning. And that, that includes uh, the spirit of Wachuma medicine. Um, I conduct a healing circle ceremony. It's not a hike. It's not a uh, chaperoned psychedelic experience. It's, a, it's an actual healing ceremony. Um, which is done in a, in a very beautiful and expansive area, but it's also a contained area, um, which is safe and held, a held space. Um, I, for the duration of the ceremony, am, am holding that space. I utilize medicine songs, which <clears throat> do a number of, of neat functions in the ceremony as far as um, driving the flow of the medicine, the flow of the experience, calling in helpful spirits, clearing out unwanted energies, and the list kind of goes on there. Um, and um, we do it in this, this held container, if you will, this energetic container, so that people can really, as best as possible, let go, open themselves up <clears throat> to the medicine, and so that they can receive the maximum amount of healing and, and teachings and and, and learning as possible in, in the day's journey. And the ceremony is typically going to last, uh, well, it lasts all day. It's an all-day event. We begin in the morning. The, the circle, what I like to call the circle portion of the ceremony, lasts for about eight hours. At that point, I'm going to officially slash unofficially close the circle, and then we just continue to uh, ride out the last wave of the medicine effects until we go to bed. So sitting around a bonfire, enjoying tea and snacks and soup dinner at that point. And then when everyone's ready to go to bed, then they just go to bed in their own time. Okay. Now you've seen like, these people report some pretty profound experiences with ayahuasca. And of course, like you said, the, the internet has uh, played a big part in that. Uh, do you see the same kind of 
of uh, experiences, and, and do you find uh, what? Well, I'll let you answer that first. Yes, absolutely, and one hundred percent. And this is one of the major things that I want um, to be able to express to people and get across to people is that with the the program that I have created over the last several years with my retreat format and the way that I've been conducting um, my Wachuma ceremonies now for seven years is that I'm seeing really um, incredible and, and massive uh, changes in people, positive uh, transformational experiences um, in the realms of healing and in the conscious de consciousness development and obviously the, the spiritual evolution. Um, and I'm able to make a comparison because I began my path with ayahuasca. I began my, my path training with ayahuasca. I also managed an ayahuasca healing center um, for a while. And so having had the background and my own personal experience with that medicine and the healing that I experienced um, and witnessed amongst my peers, uh, other people who are learning and um, and and people who are coming for healing, like clients. So uh, I'm able to make a comparison between what I saw then, which I knew was, was profound, um, to switching medicines, um, beginning to conduct, and then begin, beginning to see um, similar experiences for people, similar transformations. And in, and in some um, <clears throat> situations, for some individuals, I'm seeing even greater, um, greater benefits than I did uh, those years ago when I, I was working with ayahuasca exclusively. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it, it's, a, it's a really big blessing. Now, here I am starting out in it, um, knowing, as the practitioner, knowing that there's benefits, but most people come down and are, are not quite sure what it's going to be. They have a, a feeling that, oh, I need to go and do this. Um, or I'm interested in this, but they don't really know yet until they have the experience uh, what, what's in store for them. Um, so, All right, what, what would you say? All right, I'm I'm coming down to Peru. <clears throat> it's a coin toss, ayahuasca or Huachuma. What would what would make Huachuma more of a Maybe more more suited for me than, than maybe another plant medicine. Why? <clears throat> Why watch him over or uh, over ayahuasca and maybe what what uh, who would what's the kind of person that watching would be better suited for? Well, <clears throat> first and foremost, with with these plant spirit medicines. There's a component here um, in the selection process that's non-linear, and people just have to go with a, with a, a sense, a strong feeling about what is uh, what is correct for them. So first off, if someone just sees or listens to uh, a conversation like we're having here, and something clicks and goes, "Oh, now that's it," then I say honor that. Um, in some cases, people may want to experience both, which is also fine. Um, some scenarios where this medicine may be more suited to others is um, sometimes people don't resonate with, uh, with the ecosystem or the climate that is the jungle. It's the Amazon. Um, it's really hot, humid, a lot of insects. Um, things like that. <clears throat> so people may wish to um, have their, you know, life-changing healing experience in the mountains, here in the Andes Mountains, which is a, a bit more of a mild climate. There isn't the insect uh, factor here. Um, or people just may prefer <clears throat> the mountains. They just feel more drawn to them or called to them. Uh, you'll hear me say a lot, like, it's a calling. So that's, like, subtly... And sometimes and often subconsciously a a message that we're receiving from the spirit realm, from the unseen realms. So we just feel a calling. Um, there tends to be a notion right now in the world that 
that Wachuma is more mild of an experience. Um, so I, I hear this spoken a lot. Oh, you should, you're not ready for ayahuasca yet. You should start with Wachuma. And I will say that uh, that is a, um, how do I want to say this? With certain preparations of the Wachuma medicine, that can be true. Um, and in those cases, the people are probably not going to receive the full uh, benefits or capabilities of the Wachuma medicine if they're having a preparation that tends to be weaker. Um, and in those cases, yeah, okay, if someone has a lot of apprehensions about um, kind of delving into the psychedelic world or, you know, working with uh, plant spirit, um, <clears throat> I can understand why some people would say to begin with Hochuma, but in my experience, um, it does tend to be less in your face, quote unquote, Hochuma than, than with ayahuasca, uh, visually, typically. Um, and the plants, in, in a certain way, have their own personalities. The spirits of the plants kind of have their own personalities and how they, they interact uh, with you. Um, Whereas <clears throat> with ayahuasca, sometimes it can be a little bit intense. Um, she's type, the type of spirit that will take you and show you what you need to see. And you kind of don't have a choice in that matter. It's like you've taken the cup, the medicine journey has begun, and there's no getting off the ride until it's, until it's over. And that's the case with any plant medicine. But ayahuasca can be more like the grandmother grab you by the ear, like, come here, you, and you... You need to go here. And Wachuma tends to be one that he'll show you, you know, what needs to be taken care of. And if you're not quite ready to go there, you may not have to. But I don't want to undermine the, the, you know, the potential for, for significant healing and transformation from this medicine, especially with the preparation of the medicine that I have um, uh, come upon to make. Um, and... Uh, with the with the way I conduct the ceremony physically, um, it's no less potent than than any ayahuasca any ayahuasca experience out there. Um, so I would say for people who are who are kind of sitting on the fence, you have to just kind of feel into your gut, kind of feel into your heart, and go with what sounds uh, and feels right for you. Um, either way. You know, it's my understanding with, with uh, you know, plant medicine and, and the world of spirit that you'll be drawn to where you need to go um, for whatever reason. It can be for your healing. It can be for your learning. Sometimes we need lessons or sometimes we need to have different experiences. So I just want to make it clear to people that um, there is an alternative to uh, ayahuasca uh, medicine that's... It's just as, just as profound, and that is Wachuma, and the, the, the Wachuma experience that I've been blessed with and taught how to share with people. Um, you hear a lot of stories about people drinking ayahuasca on their own and getting into trouble and getting other people into trouble with it, uh, and Wachuma seems to be a little bit more forgiving in that respect, at least based on you know, anecdotal evidence. Why would you recommend why would you recommend people drink with you as opposed to on their own? The way that I I answer that question is um, when we're talking about the benefits that one can receive from the plant medicine experience, not limited just to Wachuma, but because specifically I'm a Wachuma and that's what we're discussing here. We're talking about Wachuma. To maximize the benefits 
<clears throat> that you're going to get on those three main levels that I discussed, healing, consciousness development, spiritual evolution. Um, it, it requires or relies upon three factors. Okay, the first is <clears throat> the medicine itself. So um, that is the work that the medicine is doing on a biological level and a physical level when it's ingested, as well as the spirit behind the medicine. And that's really where the kind of the miraculous uh, occurs, is the spirit of this, uh, of this medicine as it interacts with us as human beings, which ultimately we're, we're spiritual beings. So the medicine is one, one component. The next is <clears throat> the participant or the patient. So that is the, the effort or the energy that the patient um, puts forth in their own healing uh, process. So showing up to do the ceremony, taking the medicine, uh, respecting the rules of the ceremony and so forth while they're, they're in the medicine journey. So that's only two components. Now, the third component is the medicine practitioner or the shaman, the watcher man or the ayahuasca or whatever. And that's the person that is also putting in their, their effort uh, to the end of uh, the healing. Um, so when these three components are all together, you can imagine one of those uh, circle diagrams where the three circles overlap. In that middle point, that is where the benefits are the best. They're the greatest. Take away the practitioner, and then you just have two circles. You just have the medicine and the patient. I'm not talking about someone um, who's had years of training. So if I were to um, just go out <clears throat> on my own, as I often do, and take medicine, um, I'm at that stage where I can do that. But for most people um, who are coming down to Peru or wherever they're <clears throat> participating in these, these experiences are not there yet. So in the beginning, in the early going, the maximum benefit that they can receive on the three levels is going to be when the three components are all there and working, doing their best, giving their best effort in the ceremony. The plant, the participant, and the practitioner. One, two, three. Been down here for ten years. What are some of the positive changes and some of the negative changes that we've seen come about in the last ten years? We'll start with positive. What are some of the positive things before you start? Before we go into the negatives. Okay. With respect to. Uh. Mm. With the respect to the way people uh, come do the plant medicines work and the um, the let's say the let's say the business of uh, the business of medicine, yeah, the business of medicine work or plant medicine work. Well, I, I guess a positive is that uh, again the exposure that plant medicines have uh, have gotten over the last ten years or so. Um, since before ayahuasca was, you know, now it's a household name, I think. Um, but, uh, that exposure is good. That's, that exposure is definitely good because there is, there is a, a wealth of good information on the internet and also in books, um, but available online, uh, via videos articles, uh, podcasts, and so forth, that people can have access to to what this world is all about, what plant medicine healing is all about. That's a major positive. Um, and it, I just remember in the beginning, it was like, okay, it's just kind of gaining interest and there's not that much information out to it. To now, 10 years later, there is <clears throat> there's quite a bit of information out there, which I guess leads to a negative because all of the information out there can't be good, right? So that's a downside. Um, and I think... Hmm, I'll just leave that there. So it's, yeah, the positive is, is that I'm happy that there is and there are enough places, practitioner centers and so forth, to handle the demand of uh, that is the healing needed. For, for people in this world. Um, there may even be an overabundance 
of, um, of places offering services. So that would be a negative because again, not every place that's going to offer service is going to be of top quality <clears throat> and in highest integrity. So I've noticed in places around like the Sacred Valley where I've been calling home for the last <clears throat> six, seven years is that uh, as more and more tourism comes down, people come down seeking out plant, plant medicine, seeking out a place where uh, these things are legal and respected. But I think that also tends itself towards uh, abuse of the medicines because things are just really widely available um and uh i would also suggest that a lot of people come down and and, and don't complete proper trainings uh to be able to conduct um plant medicine ceremonies and to really be able to embody in complete integrity and effectiveness being the practitioner in that scenario of the three circles that i described earlier so that's, you know, that becomes a detriment, you know, taking medicine with people who are not really qualified um, is a negative and there's plenty of that out there. So what would be your final, what would be your final message to people about uh, if, if you know, being an ambassador of what you know will be your final, your final rallying cry. I don't know. What is it that What is it that you think people don't know? Yeah. They really need to know. I want people to know that this medicine is available, and that I'm available. Um, here as a, as a practitioner with a, with a big heart <clears throat> and with the desire for people to really transform themselves and to really heal themselves. Um, I don't think we have to look very far to look around and see that we're living in a very sick world. And for many people, I think especially in the Western countries, they don't really know that there is a way to heal um, on all of our levels of our being because we're not simply just physical beings and I want people to know that that I am here as an ambassador and a representative of this watching new medicine it's my life path and I'm here as a guide um, to help people to to heal and to grow and yeah I simply want to get it out there that people know that there is this option to come down and to work with me and, and the program that I've lovingly put together over the last years, <clears throat> that I'm here in service. And then I'm here and I'm offering a service that can really be very, very beneficial for many individuals. For everyone? No, of course not. But um, for many people. And Who would you not recommend watching me to? Um, there, there are certain categories of people with, with certain mental illnesses diagnosed mental illnesses that um, should not be taking uh, entheogenic plant medicines. It also goes for ayahuasca. But beyond that, I think it can benefit most people. And from all different ages. Um, you know, we have clients that have come through in, into their 70s. Um, yeah. So to finish up, you're here as an ambassador of the medicine. Yeah. And what's the, uh, what do you want people to take away from this? Well, I just want people to know that there is, uh, there is this medicine. Um, it's, it's an option. I believe it's a very powerful and effective option for people to, um, to heal and to continue to develop their consciousness. Um, and for those who feel have felt a calling to plant medicine, but perhaps we're not feeling that ayahuasca was right for them, then it's an alternative uh, to ayahuasca medicine that it's, it's just as profound. Mm -hmm. And uh, the experience can be a little bit less demanding for those who might be off put by that from what they've read and what they've heard. 
Um, so I would like for those people to know that there is an alternative here that's just as powerful, just as effective, um, that may be a little bit more suited to their constitution. Thank you, Jim. Thank you.